to a head one time where I was meditating and I literally went into the void and there was nothing scarier than anything like that. I, have you had an experience like that? And how do you explain experiences like that? Yeah, I mean, I have to work really hard to cultivate experiences like that. Yeah. Uh, that's just, no, it was that, scary. Like, it was awful. I, yeah, no, it is terrifying, especially if you didn't cultivate it. So yeah. Yeah, it just comes up. Uh, these are known as uh, meditative absorptions. In mm. the tradition that I come from, they're called jhanas, J-H-A-N-A. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hinduism and in Buddhism alike, they're called jhanas. Mm -hmm. And these are absorptive states uh, where the mind really kind of does dissociate from this reality. It goes inside of itself, and people have all different kinds of things. You know, it should be like you've just described. Sometimes they can be filled with all kinds of bliss and light, and you can feel like you're in the presence of, of God, whether or right. not you believe in her, and, and there it all is. Um, and sometimes, yeah, it can be pretty terrifying. Yeah. Um, it's not really known, you know, scientifically, we don't yet really have the data. We don't really know what's going on uh, yeah. in the brain at that time. We do have tons of experiential data of people having these experiences, uh, and they come from being concentrated. They come, mm -hmm. Sometimes they can come very kind of spontaneously, as mm -hmm. yours seems to have. Uh, sometimes, again, I, I was on a, I think that, yeah, it was a two-month retreat, mm -hmm. cultivating those uh, those states, because as you cultivate them, you can really explore, and, and they can be really very profound. Mm -hmm. um, and even when fear is present, you know, you can just really sit with it. Uh, but they're very, that's a, another good example of something that naturally arises. It's a sign that you're concentrating, you're doing well. Um, it's not much more than that, but yes, yeah, you got a gold star. There you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, in Transcendental Meditation, in TM, uh, a lot of emphasis is put on that exact state, uh, oh, entering that state of kind of, of nothingness. Um, and there's a, that's one of the main focuses of that form of meditation, which is not actually something I practice personally, but that exact experience is, is, is one of the two, three main things that they're shooting for in TM. And it's really the center of, uh, of that practice. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I didn't like it at all. I, and now having done a lot of work, I wish I could recreate that. But now I can't because, of course, I'm striving to recreate it and it won't happen even if I try to. Well, you can, I mean, there are, you know, TM uses mantra, uh, you know, mantra practice to get really concentrated. Uh, there's ways in the kind of uh, meditation I practice. I actually teach this kind of meditation, jhana meditation, oh, okay. uh, which is, it takes a lot of time. It, it's not easy to do right. uh, at home. It's something that takes a lot of concentration, and so it tends to be better on a retreat. Yeah. Um, but you can really, you can, you can go there again. Uh, <laughs> as, as I can go fun. back to Wonderland. Yeah, there you go. You'll get so concentrated that you won't want to go back there again, right? You'll lose that, and that's when you'll slip into it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so tell us how to get to you, jmichelson.net. And spell your name, because I can't. <laughs> J-A-Y-M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-O-N.net. Okay, great. Thank you so much, and make sure to get this book. Whoops. Evolving Dharma. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, My pleasure. Bye-bye.